Hey family, welcome to some more communication education. I am Denise Hill and I love sharing communication with folks because oftentimes we just believe communication is talking or writing or reading or listening to music. Communication is all that and more because all of that is part of a process. It's the process that's actually communication where there's a sender that puts a message together, sends it through a channel, and that they, the receiver gets it, breaks it down for meaning and understanding, and then they go back and they formulate their own message and they send that back and that's known as feedback and the process just continues over and over again. And because it's a process, there's so much stuff that can go wrong inside a process, right? You look at you know, the process of your car driving down the street, like there's so many components and so many pieces and at any time something can happen, you know, the oil runs low and it affects the engine or the brakes wear down and it affects your ability to stop. Like the same thing goes on in the process of communication. There are so many little pieces that can make it so the communication exchange doesn't work the way you intended. And there's so many different types of communication, right? There's intrapersonal communication, which is that self-talk. There is interpersonal between individuals, small group, mass communication with radio and television, public speaking is a lot of them. And I'll do you all a favor and give you everything you need to know about them, okay? <laughs> I got you. Listen, today we're talking about Weak words and strong words. Yeah, weak words versus strong words. Now, these have their most impact when we're talking to ourselves, when we're using this language within ourselves and our internal conversations, weak words have the most impact because everywhere we go, there we are. So I don't care if you're going to work. I don't care if you're showing up in your relationship. I don't care if you are we're talking with your kids, if you are you know, on the street, interacting with the community. You're in all those situations. <laughs> Other people may change, but you are all up in there. And so your self-talk has to be on point because it's always going to affect every place you go. Everywhere you go, there you are. And there your communication is. And so we wanna make sure we're having language and utilizing language that works towards us achieving our goal works towards us presenting ourselves in the best way possible and showing up in this world and in our relationships the best way possible. And so we need to make sure we're using strong language as opposed to weak language. We're utilizing strong words as opposed to weak words because what we say will be what manifests in our life, will be what shows up in our relationship and shows up in our scenario. And so, you know, I talk about this in my book, Control, Alt, Delete, How to Reset Your Life. You can always go to denisehill.com and get that. But there is a chart here of weak and strong words. And, and so let me just share with you some of the weak ones. Maybe, trying, possibly, hoping, probably, think, failing, and my all-time, oh, I can't stand word, is can't. Well, it's a contraction, but still, it, I don't like that word. Now. What all of these words have in common is that they leave the possibility for what you desire to manifest, for what you want to happen in that scenario to not happen. I mean, come on, think about it. Uh, maybe I can make it tomorrow. I'm trying to get up and get started. It's possibly it, it could work. Possibly it can't. Like you're leaving space for the thing that you don't want to happen to happen because you haven't definitively said, this will be so. You haven't used words like will, this will happen. I can do it. It must occur today. I plan on this happening and my actions are going to go towards it. Definitely will. I know it's possible. I'm learning how to do this. I can. Like those are strong words and they leave no space for doubt, no space for question, right? They're going to work toward the goal that you set in front of you. They're going to work toward the relationship you're working to build. They're going to work towards your progress, not perfection, but your progress in life and in being the person you want to be. 
And so we've got to learn a new language sometimes because we've, we've spoken this way and we've internalized this language as it's okay to say all too often. And I gave the scenario of uh, someone asking someone to meet them for coffee, right? Let's meet at eight o'clock. You look at your calendar, like eight o'clock, I can't. Why? Because, well, you're doing something else at that time. And so you've made it an impossibility because that's what can't means, an impossibility for that to occur at eight o'clock. It doesn't matter if your schedule suddenly opened up. It doesn't matter if, you know, eight o'clock was bad, but 815 was okay. It doesn't, there's no opportunity for you to think of any possible ways. There's no opportunity for growth. That's why we call it a growth mindset, right? Because there's possibility for things to continue to manifest and grow and expand beyond what we even thought was possible. But when you say impossible, it's a wrap, done. Now you have limited yourself. That's that limiting mindset and language is a huge part of it. So you've got to work to use strong words in your life as opposed to weak, because I can't make it for coffee at eight o'clock can turn to, I have something else scheduled at that time. How about 8.30? And if it opens up where I can come earlier, I will. Man, that leaves so much space for possibility. <laughs> it's so many other options that are, you can see now that you couldn't see before simply because your language limited you. So strong words, are a necessary part of the language of somebody who is trying to grow, who is working toward a goal and has a desire to achieve. Do your best to get weak words out of your language, out of your space. Even when people around you, when you start shifting your mindset and you're working to use strong <laughs> language and strong words, even when people around you are using weak words, like it starts to affect you. You're like, wait a minute, hold on. I can't, ooh, that energy. Like it starts to affect you. I'm telling you, don't let it in your space. Don't let it in your mind or in the conversation that you have for yourself, okay? Make that an impossibility. Use strong words so that you can have a full, productive, goal-oriented, achievement-driven, successful life. I wish that for you. Okay, I look forward to provide more communication education for you. So I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget, it's not about what you say. It's about what you communicate, all right?